Hello everyone, and thank you for your time. Today, I'm going to talk about my work and the opportunity I have to achieve my dream. Thank you to Rotary. My name is Alexi Mwanzakabongo. I am from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I am a Rotary Peace Fellow. I'm also a student in a global health concentration at Gilling School of Global Public Health. And I'm going to talk to you about the ACPP projects. In the healthcare field, community focus are trends and they contribute a lot in different healthcare interventions. The involvement greatly contributes to accessing primary healthcare in their communities. This expertise can be used in peace activities, such as addressing gender-based violence. I will talk about my dream. I will talk about the community focus. I will talk about the involvement in gender-based violence, and then I will conclude. Before joining the Rotary Peace Fellowship Program and the Gilling School of Global Public Health, as a medical doctor, I recruited and I trained community health workers in different healthcare interventions. For example, preventing and treating malaria. And I witnessed the impact of this training in the community. When I applied for the Rotary Peace Fellowship Program, my dream was to use my experience with the community health workers to train them for peace activities. So I've been asking myself a question on how can we train and deploy community health workers for peace within their communities? This question led me to the next question, which is, as a medical doctor, how can I bridge peace and health? As we know, it's hard to talk about peace without health and to talk about health without peace. Community focus are members and leaders of the community. So they share the same dialect, the same socioeconomic status, the same lifestyle, and more. In the healthcare sector, they are trained for different health interventions. For example, vaccination for children and pregnant women. They trained in educating the population for different, different interventions such as antenatal care, and they're also trained on HIV and tuberculosis care and more. So what are some community health workers success stories? Community health workers contributed in increasing the immunization coverage for children and pregnant women by educating the community. For example, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the number of unvaccinated children decreased from 18 million to 14 million between 2021 and 2022. The percentage of women who reached four antenatal, antenatal care visits during their pregnancies went up from 41 to 48%. Community health workers also play a role in reducing morbidity and mortality due to malaria by educating the community to use bed nets, by treating kids in the community care site and by teaching the community to keep their environment clean. For example, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the prevalence of death due to malaria decreased from 15% to 10% between, 19, 19, between 1990 and 2019. So how can we capitalize on these success stories? How can we bridge peace and health using these success stories? My idea for bridging peace and health is to apply community health workers to the area of gender-based violence. As we know, gender-based violence is a peace and health concern in South Africa and many other countries around the world. I'm going to talk a little bit about gender-based violence to highlight this concern and to show the role played by the community health workers. So what can I say about gender-based violence? Gender-based violence is any kind of violence against a person because of their gender. Gender-based violence is mostly associated with unequal power 
in balance. And gender-based violence is also, gender-based violence also includes child sexual abuse and harmful traditional practices such as early forced marriage and female genital mutilation. Today, gender-based violence is a health and peace issue. According to the World Health Organization, one in three women has been victim of gender-based violence during their life. And the consequences of gender-based violence go beyond health. Children and women are the most affected physically and psychologically. Gender-based violence creates chaos in community. More family, most families are broken and children are abandoned. Most cases of gender-based violence are unrecognized because they are not reported. Almost 50% of women have no other choice than to stay silent because they are unable to support their kids alone due to the power dynamic within the household. During my applied field experience, I traveled to Johannesburg in South Africa, and I had a chance to interview community health workers and other healthcare workers who were involved in the ACIPEPE project. ACIPEPE is a Zulu word that means let us be safe. This project is between health and peace because, as I said, gender based violence is between health and peace. And just by the name of the project ACIPEPE, Let Be Free, you can feel that there is a need to create peace within uh, these communities. ACIPEPE is a two-year pilot project in two clinics, GP and Malvern, both clinics in Johannesburg. And as we know, more and more gender-based violence is becoming a pandemic. And uh, it's a very sensitive topic. Not everyone is able to talk about it, if not trained. What is special with this project is uh, to bring peace, community focus, are trained with the necessary, the necessary skills and knowledge that allow them to take care of the victims of uh, violence. So those community health workers are becoming a safety net of all the victims because they are the first receivers of all those victims. Then uh, they can refer them to relevant stakeholders such as uh, social workers. In South Africa, community workers are part of the healthcare system. So they have their regular duties in the clinic. For the ACPP project, a total of 80 women were enrolled in the project and a total of 26 people were trained among them, community health workers and other healthcare workers. For this project, trained people receive gender-based violence cases. They find a quiet place to talk to them to understand what is the problem, and then to refer them for further assistance. This project is going through different challenges. For example, there is a breakdown in communication between community health workers and other healthcare workers within the clinics. And in those, those two clinics, gender-based violence cases are not a priority compared to other health issues. Malvern and GP clinic and the surrounding areas are mostly unsafe. And uh, lastly, the gender-based violence referral system is not working properly. For example, the social worker is present in the clinic or once, only once a week, which is not enough. So what do community health workers think about addressing gender-based violence in these two communities? As we know, Men are the perpetrators and the youth are the future perpetrators of violence. So community health workers believe that involving men and youth in the solution would be a good start to win this fight against gender-based violence. So what are the next steps? I met a couple of times and discussed this, top this topic with the Rotary Club of Johannesburg. With, the, with this club and an NGO called Lady of Peace, we talked about bringing the training beyond gender-based violence. So the Rotary Club of Johannesburg and the Lady of Peace are ready to meet with the community focus from these two clinics 
in order to support them with extra training in gender-based violence, but more with added peace-related training that can help to decrease violence in the community. Moreover, the idea is to use the community focus from these two community, like the Rotary Voice, in their community promoting peace. In conclusion, I would say, community focus significantly contribute to health and peace. And gender-based violence is an example. It's just one example that can be extended to other peace, uh, to, other, to other aspects of peace. There is a need to invest in training and upskilling of community health workers. Working in a multidisciplinary team will bring significant and sustainable changes in community. So my conclusion is uh, health and peace can be bridged together. Thank you.